Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Technical Talks with Neeraj. I think we have been again being asked with a lot of common questions and uh, one of that is the title today that is what is the career path for a QA when it comes to freshers or even when it is coming to someone who is already working as a QA what they can foresee as their future down the line 5 years 10 years or what should be the other elements what we should look forward to. in terms of preparing well being consistent and being competitive trying to achieve the technical excellence and being successful in their career path so we wanted to just build up a, again a session here to help you understand more about that what someone can look forward to as to those elements which are very important for them to build a career path altogether So to start with of course the very first thing we would like to talk about how open it is for a fresher and then we'll come to the experienced so when we talk about a fresh graduate looking forward to build their career in QA they certainly have a lot of opportunities the importance is of course the mindset of a QA we need someone with innovation creativity and those kind of perception which a tester certainly needs being a fresher you are very much innovative very much creative from the generation you come so say for example if you're talking about 2025 we are talking about the generation who's pretty much knows what a technology is what exactly the programming languages are and at the same time you pretty much know what exactly the creativity and innovations we are looking forward to so you're not someone whom i should sit down and train or look forward to you know put you into a training give you some fundamentals i can certainly make use of you directly on the job and at the same time make use of your creativity and your intellectual thinking to build better qa profile here but of course being a fresher it certainly has a lot of challenges to start with it's not that easy that anyone can just step into the testing world and get started with you know implementing the activities they certainly have to prepare for this particular position they have to prepare themselves to be ready for the interviews and certainly have some good soft and hard skills to be prepared for that So to start with the modules the modules we might look at which is very important someone should go through so of course the very first important thing here we would like to talk about is of course the fundamentals of testing the fundamentals will test of testing will certainly give you a lot of basic terminologies the definitions the core concepts of testing that what is test process all together what is test analysis what is test design how to write efficient test cases remember one thing team writing test cases is not a big deal in the world of testing writing efficient test cases is certainly going to make sense so you should know you should in fact have the art of writing effective test cases at the same time should know different templates that how to read a test plan how to understand or prepare an execution report importantly how to log a defect what are the important fields in that then what does the field basically mean all about like how do we define severity why would a developer go for priority definition and certainly these are from the basic and fundamental things and uh, when we talk about the uh, other topics like static testing test techniques uh, what is a review being collaborative in terms of participating uh, by reviewing the requirements and there are many such things which you can talk about also having a bit of flavor of non functional testing would be of great help but again in order to get started with the journey of test engineer you do not really need to know a lot of fun- non functional aspects but having fundamental understanding that what is performance testing what is security testing what is usability testing would be of great help the reason is when you are sitting in a conversation when you are participating in your team meets and all and then they use any of these terms at least you can correlate that what exactly we are talking about but of course you don't have to be involved in implementing it but the point is you will not sound blank in front of them so having the flavor of functional and non functional would be great should have good knowledge of unit integration system and acceptance testing where acceptance testing again will be collaborating sometime we are even working with the businesses in order to help them write the proper acceptance test so you should have the knowledge of what these levels are and certainly would give you great help and in order to design test cases you do need lot of things which are like test techniques so someone should be very much familiar with what the different techniques are like equivalence partition boundary value analysis decision table testing being very very practical it's not necessary that the domain you get into the subject you get into may use all these techniques but you may have your own relevant techniques but point is 
By being aware of test techniques in the interview, you can certainly say that you know what test techniques are and apply it. Of course, an organization wants people who are aware of something that they can groom, but not something to teach from the scratch, right? So when you say that, yes, I have worked with equivalence partition, I know what is boundary value analysis, I, as an interviewer, would feel that, okay, this guy certainly knows something and I just have to groom him up with another you know, set of element or groom her up with some more techniques and that's all the job is done. So that's pretty much how it goes. So the fundamental concepts uh, being aware of is really, really important. So once you're done with your fundamentals, you can talk about some of your hard skills. The hard skills here, what I refer to is the programming knowledge. So we today in 2025, we are not looking at any such tester who does not understand what is programming languages. In fact, this would be over a period of time will be helpful for you to learn about automation, which we'll come back and talk about. So you would be interested to know more about something like very common languages used these days, that is Java, JavaScript, or Python, is what I would recommend strongly, which the organizations and companies are looking at at 2025. So .NET and all the things are very limited in the market, so I don't want you to push into that, but Java, JavaScript, Python would be of great things to be added into your portfolio. Also, of course, having that knowledge of databases would be of great, but again, SQL and NoSQL would be of great option. So MongoDB can be considered as another option which you can add with help of, uh, with, with, in addition to the SQL, right? So these are the, some database knowledge. And certainly, if you would like to add more to the hard skills, you can even explore some of the simple things like Jira, which is going to be a common element in any organization to manage your daily task being a part of Agile methodology. Yes, in fact, you should know about SDLC models. So go back to that and you should also talk about what is Agile methodology in terms of the fundamentals and understand that what is a scrum process, what are the ceremonies, what is the involvement of a tester, where exactly we need to participate and how we need to work collaboratively with other people, right? So coming back to the hard skills, so one is your programming language, second is your databases, knowledge of some of the tools which we use, but on top of it, you should work on automation skills as well. Now, when we talk about automation skills, we are pretty much talking about the information related to automation testing. So here, the common tools which you can start with or probably learn about is Selenium, Cypress, Playwright. These are some of the things which you can get started with. So as a fresher, if you have some of these tools or maybe all three tools into your profile, I have a lot of opportunities for you in the market right? Because the organizations are currently thriving to work with these kind of tools. The question is, uh, someone said that, should I go with any kind of commercial tools as well, like UFT, Catalan, and other things? Answer is, uh, like Tosca Commander and all. Answer is, they are optional, because it's not widely and very, you know, often used. But majority of the organizations are using uh, Selenium, Cypress, and Playwright. So it would be easy for you to adapt. And at the same time, being a fresher, we need to increase our opportunity to get a job. So that is more important. And we should always do a survey to understand that which tool is being widely used in the market today so that if I talk about my proficiency in that tool, more opportunities will flow in. So Selenium Cypress Playwright would be a good option. But if in case you're getting an opportunity uh, without any kind of effort and investment to learn about some of the commercial tools, feel free to add that. The more you know, the better your chances and opportunities would be. So these are some of the technical skills what you can certainly look forward to add to your portfolio and be prepared for that. Other thing to add here is, of course, when we have the fundamentals clear, we have our tools prepared, we know what exactly it is. You can even step a little bit in terms of introductory to understand more about what is Jenkins, what is GitHub, because we will be using repositories in the organization. If you say that you know a kind of repository like GitHub or Bitbucket or SVN, etc., that would be of great help. So GitHub is something common which we also use today. Like even if you in your graduation, you would have used it very well for managing your projects and other artifacts. And same way Jenkins would be more from the pipelining and CICD. So you can even look forward to that as an introductory part. And they're very small, okay? Know some good Git commands, know some interactions with Jenkins, and that would be more than enough because we don't want you to initially get started with them. But when you showcase yourself that I'm ready for the world, organizations love such profile. They say that, okay, even though this person knows that I'll be a QA here, I'm applying for a QA job, I'm pretty much proficient with what's happening around me. And any organization would look forward to have this kind of skill. 
in any individual, right? So that's more about what the knowledge you need to possess in order to talk about it. Let's come to the career path, what you can expect down the line working in an organization. Of course, the career path would be very, very to the point. For example, you will be starting as a junior associate or maybe a SQA engineer or there are different positions in the market. So you need to understand what kind of positions you're looking at. For example, you can be called as a QA engineer. You can be called as an associate engineer or associate software engineer. So all these definitions or designations pretty much remain the same. You are just at an entry level in the organization where you might be required to do your best and at the same time, learn the most what the organization culture is all about in terms of technology. Like understand the real process. Remember, I told you that you have to learn about the fundamentals of testing. They are theoretical. When it comes to practical, there are a lot of things which organizations do differently. And we need to get adapted to that. And that is more important. As a junior resource, as an associate resource, you will be required to explore as much as possible that how things work in the real world. And certainly that fundamental knowledge would be required to apply it to understand. Okay, without the fundamental, you cannot understand what the organizations are doing, right? So when you learn the flavor of the organization, the flavor of the work which happens in the real world, you'll be able to further connect the dots and build yourself with more confidence to understand that, okay, this is what we have been doing and this is what is more important for us, right? So that's where pretty much this will help you to uh, set up your first position into the organization. And over a period of time, you can look forward to become a senior resource, uh, lead resource. And at the same time, we do have designations like senior test engineer, you have uh, uh, equality analyst, and then you have principal SQA, or you know, every organization may have their own set of rules or definitions to their designation. But these are some of the pretty much common definitions where we put you into a senior software engineer and then you have, uh, say, for example, technical lead and then you can get into test managership. The test managership is more of like where you look forward to uh, the managing the overall testing within the organization. And uh, post that, you can certainly look forward to be an independent contributor. You can be a test consultant or even more of like a test director to the organization. So there are multiple opportunities for you if you would like to continue with your QA career, therefore. But over a period of time, given that you will be working with technology, you will be working with your testing skills, the developers collaboration, and given that you know what is programming, it would be great to make sure that you can even choose alternative options. For example, if you would like to become a business analyst, you can get into that domain as well. So it's open to all and business analyst certainly needs to know product in and out and should have further additional capabilities, which is more of like the key communication skill, the presentation skills, and convincing and other business strategies, right? So convincing and communication will plays a vital role because you will be interacting uh, with the business, the customers, and you will be a business-facing portfolio. So you must know how exactly to present your business to someone at the same time, how to collect information from them. So being a business analyst, you will be responsible more for gathering the requirements for the team, which they would basically be implementing. So you will be responsible to answer any of their queries, any of their doubts, any of their clarifications, and get more information from business time to time. So over a period of time, you can even look forward to switch, if you would like to, uh, to the business analyst or product owner role being from testing. But of course, it would need some time, like maybe three to four years of time, five years of time. When you think you're very much confident with overall SDLC, then that's the time you can look forward to do that. But QA has a lot of opportunities for you. You can be a technical lead presenting yourself. You can be a senior manager or manager, and there are a lot of positions open for you. That's pretty much what it takes you to look forward to the QA journey as of today. So tools uh, we're pretty much aware of, now the positions so now we are clear with what modules we need. We understood about the positions which we can gain and we have also discussed on the tools. Let me just add a flavor to it. If you would like to have some certifications added to your portfolio, that would be of great help because again, organizations do prefer people who have better recognitions in their work because a certification is just not mere an accreditation or just not a recognition, but also it adds value that someone is really proficient with it and they have certified, that means they have been through an examination and they were able to answer the examination and get clear with it. 
So that adds a lot of weightage and we respect such profiles in the market. So being a fresher, if you have few certifications with you and we are not talking about Udemy course completion here, we are talking about professional certifications. Like you can talk about ISTQB, you can take ISTQB foundation. If you work with, say for example, Jira, you may look forward to a class in certification or maybe any other tools which you're working with, you may get certified with that as well. Like Java certified professionals from Oracle. So you can look forward to add these certifications optionally. It's not mandatory to get hired. It's not a criteria to get a job, but it's just that if you have certifications, I look forward to you as a better portfolio. So certifications would also play a very vital role to add on top of it, right? So this would help you to design, align your aim and pathway to further look forward to what kind of uh, you know expectations the freshers may have. Experienced people can certainly look forward to add more. I'll separately create a video on that to talk about what experienced people career path can be, but let's keep it limited to freshers in this particular video so that we can concentrate on them with best details possible. Last but not the least, if you'd like to connect with me and have further assistance and guidance, I have a TopMate page here and which I'm sharing with all of you. So TopMate is an amazing platform here where I am hosted and I, you can connect with me and you can look forward to the services, which you would see that I offer many of the things when it comes to connecting with the people. So you can have a one-to-one -one mentorship with me. If you would like, you can even connect with me for a quick chat. You can have a career guidance session with me, or you can even just go ahead and uh, look forward to have a technical discussion. If in case you have any problems with your implementations or learnings, what you do with automation or uh, software testing fundamentals, you can always schedule a call with me and you will be having a 30 minute session to discuss with me what exactly your problem is. And I will be here to help you assist as much as possible to best deal with that, right? So all we need, see, all we understand from here is that when there is a preparation path defined, where is a you know career way defined, we are preparing for it. We do have a lot of questions. The most important thing is where exactly to get those answered. So many people will tell you about the paths. Many people will tell you how exactly to achieve that, but nobody will be there to assist you when you need them. And this is where the top mate is helping me to give connect with my audience as much as possible. So make use of this platform, connect with me, feel free to join and certainly look forward to get your queries resolved. And I'll be more than happy to assist you all to make sure that you have the best success of it, you know, achieved in your pathway. Right. So wishing you all the very best. And that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.